Wow. Hi guys, let's have a look inside this faulty uh, power amp from QSC. It's from a rental company. I'm helping them out from time to time with difficult repairs. Probably I can fix it, but I don't expect it because with their uh, switch mode power supplies and probably no schematics here, yeah, it's a pain. But anyways, let's have a look inside. Uh, I, I think it will be kind of interesting. The owner already attempted a repair. Here are all the screws and I've seen uh, the screws are already missing. Uh, hopefully it's still in yeah, untouched original condition. Let's see. The handle is broken. I had to flip it over. Remove the panel and there we are. Very nice design with the heat shroud. So the airflow uh, is forced through the heat sinks. Very nice. This is the input filter. This is the switched mode power supply. And I can see already that it is broken somehow. Yeah, magic smoke. Input connectors, very nice. Neutric. Great gold plated contacts. You really need gold plated contacts in harsh environments. Uh, the speaker outputs. That's okay. Here is the input power socket. Mains filter. After the filter, there's this wire going to the power switch. A power on time delay. The first few seconds the complete power runs over this resistor to reduce the input current. And after a few seconds the relay uh, bypasses the resistor. Wire goes back to the input rectifier and the reservoir caps are Cornell Dubillier, I guess. CDE. Here is the inverter chopper, mains transformer. And can you imagine this small thing can handle over 3000 watts? This is because of the high frequency of the switched mode power supply, allowing uh, a different material for the core, hence the very tiny size. The output of the transformer then goes into the uh, output uh, rectifiers and filtering caps all over the place. Kind of interesting. Underneath this heatsink there are diodes too. This is the power amp block. And it is amazing. Look at that. Wow. And of course, servicing these things is a pain, really. I managed to repair such amps and it was very time consuming, but it can be done. Nice. You can see the transistors, power transistors here. And there are transistors and diodes everywhere. Capacitors are Nippon Chemicon, of course. And I can see Nishikon caps here. Before I attempt to repair the unit, I'll just check the output transistors for shorts. As long as it isn't peeping then I'm kinda confident that 
they are okay. It's just a quick look, of course. So clearly this uh, chopper transistor is dead. Uh, it is <laughs> Gonski, hi Dave. <laughs> Uh, and I expect the rectifier to uh, be dead too because uh, if this transistor blows up in a fire uh, it will draw a lot of current and this will damage the rectifier of course and I would change it anyway after such a damage. But just have a short look, gives me some weird results. I guess I should change it anyway. Weird, weird. Here are diets. I'm pretty sure the secondary side is fine. Yes. Here is what I guess is the main cause for the failure. Dusty. There was not enough fresh air going to the heatsink. And we are about to have the same problem here. No, that's bad. I always recommend my customers uh, to do a cleaning process on these amps. Here is the trick. Long screwdriver. Whoa, Are you crazy? Whoa. No, no, it does not work. There we go. Okay, I will remove these screws as well because I want to change the rectifier even though it has no shorts but I guess... Uh, yeah. Does not look so professional but it's a valid solution, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> the longest screwdriver in the world. Uh, and now I need the shortest in the world. This is what I have to order at yeah. RS components, Funnel, Tichiki. Let's see. Today I will open my mail together with you. So, let's open it up. Nice. Okay. Oh, someone has stolen all tubes.